morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Committee on Education meeting this morning. Um, we do have three members present, and so we will begin this meeting because we have quorum. Thank you to the members of the community who have made it here today and those online. Um, allow me to introduce our members that are present today. Um, on my right, we have Representative Denita Yangtemai. And on my left, we have Representative Donald Manglonia. Absent excused today are Representative Edmund Propes and Representative uh, Vice Chair Sheila Babauta. Um, <clears throat> Thank you to the LB staff present today in our meeting. Assisting us with legal counsel is Brendan Layed, and we also have uh, Joe Tyheron in the house. IT and streaming, we have Jonathan Diaz and Delbert Camacho. And our legislative assistant is Cameron Nicholas. And we have two sergeant at arms present today, Peter Toai, and new to the team, Will Brendan Uggen. Welcome. Uh, we do have a quorum, and so moving forward on our agenda, um, I'd like to just note before we adopt the agenda that um, there is one small technical error on old business that uh, Senate Bill 22-05 SS1 should also indicate House Draft 1, HD1. That, that's a typo on my end. Um, you do have copies of that, uh, and so moving forward. Can I get a motion to adopt our agenda? The motion was moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say nay. And the agenda has been adopted. Um, I'd like to ask that we uh, postpone the adoption of minutes as uh, because of last meeting, I, I thought we would um, uh, recess and then come back, but uh, due to the change, we, we were not able to finish the minutes uh, in time for today's meeting, but it will be ready for the next. Um, so moving on to public comments. Uh, the floor is open to public comments to anybody uh, who would like to give comments today. Going once, going twice. And there are no public comments on, on today's uh, agenda, or there will be no public comments given from today. All right, moving on to new business. This is actually a continuation of last meeting because um, we, were, we were not able to um, hold our meeting due to some air conditioning uh, replacement. So thank you, NMTI, for rejoining us here today in uh, the chamber. We are really excited to hear about your updates. And so I know you've got um, your presentation being put together up here. I'd like to invite all of your members who are part of your presentation to join us today up here on the, the house floor. Thank you, Sergeant at Arms. Good morning. All right, go ahead, get comfortable. And um, as we start this this morning, we are really excited to welcome you to back to the house. It's been a little while since your last uh, visit, and we'd love to hear all of the amazing updates that are coming out of uh, the M Tech NM Tech programs that you guys are are putting out there. I've seen some great billboards promoting um, enrollment, and so we'd love to hear what you have in store for us today. Um, so maybe you can go ahead and begin by uh, having any opening remarks and introducing your team for the record. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for having us today. We are excited to be here to share all the developments from the past year. Um, with me, I have my team, Ms. Charlene Kitano. She is our HR manager, operations manager. She is my good hand. <laughs> And then we have Mr. Benjamin Babata, who is our marketing and outreach coordinator. He is also the owner of Tyler's Gelato and <laughs> Bistro Boys, so, or a partner. But he's a hardworking man that, you know, we're just grateful to have in our team. Ms. Rochelle Holgado, who is our student services coordinator. She, too, is a very hardworking mother of three and 
we appreciate all that she does. Then up there, and she totally matches <laughs> Miss Rani Camacho. She's the newest member to our team um, and is also an NM Tech student. And, you know, her recruitment and, well, their recruitment efforts, including our HR office, uh, we were lucky enough to have her become an employee of NM Tech. So we're great. I'm, I'm very thankful to have all of these people you know, they're helping us um, really just strive to do better. So on the first slide, you see beautiful pictures of them. <laughs> um, our office hours are Monday to Thursday from 8.30 to 5.30 and Friday from 8 to 5. We, we do, we have flexible office hours so that we can accommodate a lot of the working students that we serve. And that's something that we we had to tweak since we first started. So just wanted to note that. All right. Yeah. Push the button and you'll see this thing turn red at the top. There you go. Maybe come closer to the mic. Sorry. Uh, no, it it was correct, but I think maybe the back, the cord sometimes gets a little loose. So maybe just play with it a little, or the sergeant at arms will come and help you. All right, there you go. <laughs> Good morning. Yes. There you go. Good morning, everyone. So we will talk about our uh, enrollment. So my name is Rochelle, uh, the student services coordinator. I'm kind of a little bit nervous. First time to present here, so <laughs> don't worry, okay. you'll be fine. Yes, thank you, representative. So yes, uh, okay. So all our courses have different durations, and uh, we reopen our classes in August uh, 2021. And with that, um, uh, we garnered 46 students who registered in automotive, culinary, and um, core, which is a prerequisite in any uh, construction uh, trade curriculum. So in by in fall 2000 cycle two that began in November 2021, we garnered uh, 30 students who enrolled in um, uh, welding, carpentry, air condition, and um, electrical courses. That's why we came up with 76 students that NM Tech served for fall. By the spring 2022, the first cycle that began in February, we garnered another batch of 20 students who enrolled in uh, automotive and culinary arts. So NMPEC is currently running seven courses with um, 50 students. 30 of these students will uh, complete their level, their course level uh, this month and will move to their next level in spring two, cycle two. And I mean, in spring 2022, cycle two in May. Uh, NMT, uh, uh, we forecast increased enrollment uh, as we continue to receive inquiries and positive feedbacks from the community uh, by offering classes that appeals to their interest that is relevant to the trades. Thank you. Okay, here, this part, uh, just presenting with everyone the demographics of our student population at NM Tech. Um, so, the importance of uh, monitoring and tracking the demographics of our student population is that it uh, provides information that are impact to our student achievement at NM Tech. Now, the demographics that we've uh, monitored uh, thus far is the our student gender, our student ethnicity, and our the courses that uh, interest our students. So, as we reopened the school back in the fall in August 2021. Um, a high increase on the student gender uh, was the males. Uh, they showed a lot of inter uh, interest in um, automotive and the construction trade courses. Our female, by the, by the spring, our female population have increased with the interest in uh, culinary. And we see a, we forecast that our student gender on the female will continue to rise as they start to um, embed themselves into understanding the construction trade courses that we offer and the need for it in our community. 
And as far as ethnicity, 70% of our student population are majority the local uh, Pacific Islander that we serve in our community. 25% uh, are Asians. And we've just begun, we've just garnered our 5% uh, white, solo white student that we have. <laughs> Now, as far as courses, when we reopen back in August, uh, we open all the courses that we can offer and our students uh, showed interest in uh, culinary, welding, automotive, and electrical. In the fall, um, electrical and carpentry came in again. In the spring, uh, we, we were able to offer, again, culinary and automotive as the second level, moving forward with um, back to construction trade courses when we, our next cycle in May. Thank you. So because we are still very new, uh, we did do some outreach activities. Uh, in 2021, we had a representative, Sheila Babata, host us at uh, Tanapak Middle School. Uh, where we did our first outreach. We also did more for Northern Marianas International Football Association, uh, Dalk High School, and we did have a meeting outreach with the CNMI Youth Congress. Um, and to close off the year, we did do a PSS Career Technical Education, and we did reopen 2022 with PSS Career Technical Education. Um, by the late January, we did uh, take a trip to Tinian and Rhoda, we met with the Tinian mayors, or Tinian and Rhoda mayors, the area directors for Department of Commerce and Department of Labor, and uh, NMC Tinian and NMC Rhoda as well. Uh, we participated in the Department of Labor Virtual Career Fair, and we presented at the Chamber of Commerce General Monthly Meeting uh, in the beginning of March. We also did uh, OVR Career Fair. And just this past weekend, we had the Community Mobile Information Literacy Fair at the Jotenkizu Public Library. We do have two more outreaches for this month at uh, KHS, and uh, we are working with SAAR for the Reentry Resource Day at the end of the month. Um, these are pictures of what we've done so far. Uh, we do have pictures um, from Rhoda, Tinian, our outreaches um, that we've been conducting. So like we said, we did just open recently, but we do have quite a achievement list that we put together. Um, the first thing that we did was we had the culinary school students um, cook a meal for Thanksgiving for uh, Guma Esperanza, and thank you, Representative, for donating the turkey for that. We also did a Tonga Relief Drive, and we also partnered with Women's Association um, for a Caesar and Carbonara night for the Women's Month uh, in March. We also established our NMTech presence in Tinian and Rhoda, and we had a MOU signing with PSS. Uh, just recently, we secured the hospitality and program for our PSS CTE programs, and we submitted proposals for the PSS CTE for our Trading Up program, which is a dual enrollment program uh, for NMTech in partnership with PSS. Um, we also did a Humanities Council movie set. Uh, it was inside Tagman Community Center. It's a 40 by 20 indoor movie set, and they will, producing, they will be producing a movie. Uh, it should be ready soon. Um, and the last thing we have is our construction students working with our construction instructors uh, for the Pacific Mini Games. We are building them the metal podiums. Uh, the umpire chairs for the tennis, and a huge 15-foot laddie stone for the burning of the opening ceremony that will be lit throughout the games. So our construction students are helping with that. Thank you. So um, in past year, it has been very evident that our team has been working super hard, getting students involved in community projects and whatnot. Um, other programs that are coming soon, and it's it's just that it's exciting to know that our partners and our community are very receptive of the different trades and technical career pathways that are that can be available to to people on the islands. Um, 
We have an ongoing memorandum of intent with Western Pacific Maritime Academy. And what we're, we're trying to do is work together on an MOA so that we can house this nonprofit organization within NMTech. That way we're able to offer these classes on a more regular basis while he, he holds the course, Coast Guard certified courses within our institute, we will be helping him with outreach activities, um, recruitment and enrollment. Um, and he'll, he'll just be holding on to like all the, the student grades. So it's still in the works, but we're hoping to launch by fall of 2022. Um, we meet at least twice a, a month just to make sure that we're both on, on the same page and things are moving along. For solar power generation, um, we already have an existing accredited program for, for alternative energy. So in working with Micronesia Renewable Energy, we, um, we just met yesterday. The, their CEO will be uh, flying in and we will be signing in a memorandum of understanding that they will be instructing the solar power class while we provide space and um, outreach and, you know, include them in our marketing and whatnot. But the, the partnerships with these nonprofits and private industries have really helped, you know, increase the amount of programs that we're able to offer. For cosmetology, we have been um, meeting with Soda and Barber, the, I, I believe they're the, the only certified beautician or cosmetologist. I, I don't know what the verbiage is, but um, is that your shop? It used to be okay. <laughs> so, so we're we're going to be working with them, um, help to build out the cu curriculum, and um, you know just apply uh, the cosmetology classroom. So instruction is going to happen at NM Tech, and all the hands-on will be happening at Soda and Barber. You should be very proud. It's a it's a great place. <laughs> um. Representative, uh, oh no, Senator, Senate President Jude Hofschneider actually connected me with SMA, Star Marianas Air, so that we could, you know, get into discussion about providing aviation courses. Um, there are a lot of things that come with the FAA. So this, this discussion has been, you know, taking longer than, than a normal planning so we're we're hoping to gather again once their COO gets back on island. Um, baking and pastry with Herman's Modern Bakery. So our team here, well, Ben's also a part-time chef. Well, he's a full-time chef, but now he's full-time marketing and part-time chef at NM Tech. <laughs> it's a complicated guy. Um, <laughs> he, he and the team were able to meet with Mr. Mike... Um, What's the last name? Guerrero. Uh, and um, to discuss the baking and pastry class in which um, Herman's Modern Bakery will be, will be hosting the course and providing the bakery equipment and whatnot in at their site through NM Tech. Um, I'm sorry, am I getting that right? You guys attended the meeting. You want to speak on that? Um, since we opened culinary uh, way back when, we had a big interest in baking and pastry. And uh, with the support of our team, we were able to pick up the ball and get it rolling. So we met with uh, Herman's Bakery yesterday. Uh, we're, we started the initial plans. We have a curriculum drafted up. And uh, it looks like we are able to start in January uh, 2023 for baking and pastry. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. So aside from all of these programs that are coming soon, um, we are also working with the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation to integrate all our students as apprentices into the, the healthcare field. That we included a clause that, that reflects the, the mission of the CNMI Department of Labor. 
So right now we have that in review with um, the director for Department of Labor, SWIOA, so that the statement matches what we want to accomplish in getting into all of these agreements and, you know, running these programs so that every time a student gets funneled to our door, we are able to help them um, secure a, a job or an apprenticeship. That way they're vetted and then secure a job. So that's the, that's the idea. Our next slide, please. Oh, oh, we're done. <laughs> Did you guys have any questions, um, concerns? Thank you for sharing your presentation. Before we open it up for um, questions from all the members, I just want to applaud all of the efforts that you and your team have done to broaden the scope of what is offered and available for access uh, mm -hmm. for our people here in the Marianas. It is so exciting to hear of what you've restarted and what may come in the near future. Um, maritime industry jobs are definitely uh, high up there in our student interests uh, in the surveys I've seen. And the fact that you could even open flight school op op options, how exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and I know a few people who would be interested in the, the beauty too. So yeah. uh, very, very, very cool and exciting to hear. Um, one thing I was curious about is... Um, how do you choose the courses each term at this point? Because I, it, it, I was just curious, do you have like a survey or is it just based on enrollment? Yeah, it's typically based on enrollment. Um, you know, if we were going to run with interest, then we wouldn't have the, the, the number of students. So the minimum of uh, number of students that we would need to, to run a class is uh, five. And should a student want to take a certain class but not reach the, the five, that student is either referred to another program within their interest or um, is asked to, to wait or go out and recruit to create a cohort. So, you know, we always try to have a plan B, but recruitment, I, I keep telling the team, they're always worried about the numbers of students, but um, we just have to give it time. We can't, um, you know, have the fruit the same day, plant the seed. So, yeah. Very true. Uh, thank you for that. I also want to um, just comment on your uh, annual report. I, I really appreciate the strategic priorities that you included. I can tell based on your presentation and the different um, outcomes that I have seen uh, already that you have been really making uh, strides towards these strategic priorities. So uh, good work on that. Um, I can open up the floor now to questions from members. Okay, Representative Mangonia, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, CEO Athel, and to your team. Thank you for coming in. I feel like um, a lot has happened since the last time we we met at the start of your term or um, you taking over an MTI and getting it to where it is now. So congratulations to that. Thank um, you, sir. To your efforts and to your team who helped start this. Uh, I'm more interested in understanding more of how um, you've, uh, I guess, more of your, your plans to expand these services to Rhode Antinian. I know you mentioned that you've done some outreach, yeah. but I just wanted to hear more of where you're at with that and um, how do you plan to move forward in uh, extending these services to both Rhode Antinian. Awesome. Thank you. That's a great question because it leads to so many other things. Um, in... In January of this year, I brought a core team of people with me to both Rhode and Tinian to conduct an assessment, both with, um, you know, getting the mayor's blessings and uh, letting them know what our plans are, um, meeting with the Department of Commerce resident directors, um, Department of Labor resident directors, just making sure that we're covering all our bases for recruitment of instructors and all the marketing that needs to happen, what activities go on in their communities. So we basically conducted a community assessment and also we hosted a town hall meeting and did outreach with, with the, the junior and senior high schools there. All in a matter of 
two days. <laughs> so we came back and as a team, you know, we debriefed. Um, of course, funding is always going to be an issue, right? But um, we came across this this uh, opportunity from the Office of Insular Affairs. Um, it's called the Maintenance Assistance Program. And um, so what we're doing is we I've written a grant, which is due on April 15th. And come July, hopefully, you, you know, hopefully we get awarded. Um, come July, that those funds are going to be reserved for Tinian and Rhoda um, so that we're able to go in and start to provide the tools and resources that are needed to, to conduct at least the core fundamental basics for the construction trades. Um, with marketing and the recruitment of instructors, they, you know, our team would have to go down and do all of the, the legwork. So the plan is to recruit instructors from their islands, get them certified so that it's more of a, you know, more money and time away from your family so that's one idea and then um we're hoping that per cohort of students who are enrolled because even um in looking at NM nmc they stated that at both tinian and rhoda there are at least six students per semester so we're hoping that we can at least get three to four uh, to run a class and as a cohort, they would travel to to the different types of construction trades or automotive um, courts that they would like to, you know, go as a group and complete their certifications as a group. Um, what else can I tell you about Tinian and Rhoda? I don't know. I, I feel like we've built we've built um, good relationships with community members, the mayors, and and the resident directors so we we stay in contact and we're hoping to launch this by spring 2023 so everything right now is in the planning and we've actually broken every task down to who's responsible for what and what are the different things that need to get accomplished before january 2023 Thank you. Um, that's exciting to hear. And then, you know, with the budget um, uh, hearings that are going to be coming up, I hope that's something that, you know, um, you can kind of prepare for in the sense of um, trying to speed up and, and and figure out how much um, you would need to, to accommodate or to provide and promote more, more services to these islands um sure. should the map not um fund certain areas um the the other thing that i i wanted to to bring up is you know how nmc does their smart program to try to you know get um uh, promote their programs to high school students is that something is there something similar to what nmt would do to um provide more outreach to students to venture into the trades um, field and, and uh, you know, if so, what are your plans in, in trying to engage more um, students to go this route? I mean, uh, I'm happy to hear that, you know, uh, it looks like numbers are increasing, but we hope to see more, um, more of that and to allow you to provide more programs understanding that five is your minimum um, requirement for students to enroll in and for you guys to start a program. So how can we assist in trying to, to get NMTI to, to do more outreach and to try to gather? Because I know the uh, percentages of the field students will want to go to after college, it, it, it seems like a lot are still undecided as opposed to going straight into college or to the military. Yeah. Um, so how are we able to attract or, you know, um, get those students who are undecided to, to try to um, enroll in an MTI? 
So to answer your first question, um, you know, our partnership with NMC is really strong. Uh, what we've been talking about is instead of reinventing the outreach uh, wheel, we would just piggyback on the smart start sessions and, you know, be present during those times. Um, this past, uh, I'm not sure, we were supposed to meet to create a calendar of when these sessions are going to be happening for NMC. The only, the only barrier with that is that our cycle, our courses are cycled differently. But either way, it's still a recruitment effort. And um, so our team has, is going, it, they're actually creating an outreach calendar so that they're not, we're not just focusing on, on smart start. And we're also, you know, go venturing into PSS, whether it be virtual or in person, all the high schools and even government entities. I mean, private, private companies. They're making sure that they know what's available to them so that they can upskill their, their employees. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and then just one last suggestion. Um, you know, you know, another route is also to try to reach out to current government employees and, and try to assist yes. them, um, to, you know, um, enhance their, their skills and, and, um, uh, to help them better prepare to climb the ladder in whatever agency they're at. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, again, I just wanted to congratulate you and your team for coming such a long way from having, uh, to, to meet with you from the start of this, uh, new government entity, um, with NMTI becoming a, you know, a government entity. And so again, congratulations to you and your team. Um, uh, Thank you, sir. You've put together so much in just a short amount of time. And uh, I just wanted to highlight that and, again, uh, congratulate you and your team. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Are you? Thank you, Representative Manglonia. And thank you for giving uh, all of these really important updates, especially with respect to Tinian and Rhoda and, and all of these opportunities. Um, any any other members would like to ask questions? Go ahead, Rep. Danita Yang Tamai. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Um, did we talk about tuition? Are, are students required to pay tuition? If so, um, do they have like help, financial support somewhere? Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead. Thank you for your question. So <clears throat> we have a partnership with NMHC. Uh, it's called the WDTSP, that which stands for Workforce Development Training Scholarship Program. Uh, they have uh, awarded us a lot of money for a scholarship. Uh, this is ex uh, specifically for the construction trade. So um, students would have to apply for a CNMI scholarship and CHEFA, and whatever is not covered will be covered by WDTSP. As for culinary and automotive, um, we do accept chef and CNMI, uh, but we are actively looking for scholarships on uh, how to get more people enrolled or uh, lessen the tuition for the automotive and uh, culinary programs. So I just want to add that um, with the State Workforce Development Board, we were approved to become an eligible training provider. So the Department of Labor, we owe us services, um, deems students who are eligible to receive certain payments for their, their tuition. But of course, with exhausting, you know, your options, if, if they didn't have um, Shefa or if they receive both, but it's not enough to cover the tuition, then Department of Labor upon eligibility would be able to cover that. Um, what else is there? <laughs> we, we have a lot. <laughs> yeah, we also offer personalized payment plans. Yeah. Um, and uh, our financial aid office also helps them break it down into affordable monthly payments uh, that could be paid after the courses are done. 
Thank you. Do you also help students find jobs after they graduated? Definitely. Um, right now, the state apprenticeship expansion. Wait, flip that. There's two separate. The apprenticeship state expansion program is is one of our biggest partners, and that's why in all our uh, memorandum of understandings with our different industry partners, we include a section that states that they become a registered apprenticeship sponsor so that all our students that, that come out and do not have jobs are eventually placed because there ha there's a requirement, a certain a number of hours to, to perform work-based learning. So they would have to be placed on the job. Um, we OWA can pay them if they're eligible to receive um, payments. And on top of that, the, the student is being vetted by the employer and might, you know, I mean, they're not like mandated to hire the, the student, but at least the vetting process happens during that time. So it's a win-win for all the different entities. And we're, we're just trying to, to close the, the gap, like fill it up and make sure that everybody is getting help along the way to achieve their outcomes. Wow, thank you. That's really great. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Rep Yang Tamai. Um, speaking of funding, I was noticing in your <clears throat> annual report that 37% of your funding for this fiscal year or last fiscal year um, came from compact impact funds. And knowing that compact impact funding ends in 2023 unless they reauthorize it, um, have you guys been thinking about how you will address that shortfall? Honestly, I've just been really adamant about searching for grants and, you know, all of that. But overall, I honestly believe that NM Tech can be a self-sustaining uh, entity. And in order for us to generate revenue, we have to make sure that we're taking care of our foundation, which is to ensure that all our admin offices are, you know, efficiently running. We have available classroom space. And while we wait for our EDA project to, to finish up, that's going to take three years. So in the meantime, we are looking for ways to do student-led um, project-based uh, activities to also build our student body um, so that those are ways that tuition can be funded, you know, by a cohort. Um, revenue is generated somehow. You know, there's, there, it's, it's gold. There's so much opportunity at NM Tech to, to make the extra money to run the operations. But for now, we're really focusing on our infrastructure, both network and physical. So we're hoping to get our roofs, the roofs for the warehouse replaced. We're hoping to get our admin offices up and, you know, built by the end of the month or the end of next month. Like there's a lot of, um, you know, funding issues now, but I believe that as soon as we get all of that out of the way, then we'll be able to, to generate our own revenue and not have to depend so heavily on compact impact and CW. So I hope that helps. Thank you. Um, it's it's definitely something that it, the, the entity should definitely keep at the uh, horizon as the um, the funding will end unless they, they re reauthorize. So I'm glad that you're paying attention to all the other uh, areas that you can um, uh, get to the support you need. Okay, um, moving on. Are there any other questions or comments from our, our members? We're good? Okay. So um, with that, I, I guess, leave. is there any closing remarks you'd like to give CEO Atal? Not necessarily, but I just want to thank you, Ms. or Representative Staffler and all the other representatives for having us today. 
for your unending support and just all the kind words. I mean, really our team, we're just there to, we put our heads down, we put in the work and we get things done. <laughs> That's her famous words. Let's get things done. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for getting things done for our Marianas and our, our people to have access to this a uh, really important source of uh, income possibly for, for people once they're certified. Um, I definitely have been selling your your <laughs> what you uh, provide in any opportunity that I have with young people or anybody who um, is looking for work. And so thank you so much for coming and sharing with uh, us today all of these great improvements and, and updates. Awesome. So you may go ahead and take leave from the floor. And awesome. thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, short recess. Thank you.
All right, and we are back. Thank you for your patience in that short recess. Um, we are back to our agenda and we are now in old business. Um, we will start with Senate Bill 22-8, Senate Substitute 1, to enact the CNMI Higher Education Act of 2021 and for other purposes. Open to discussion. Uh, we're on number one, 22-08 SS1, to enact the CNMI Higher Education Act of 2021 and for other purposes. Um, I'll start. The This bill was um, created uh, in an effort to um, in an effort to meet the Constitution, the CNMI Constitution, um, which is in Article 15, that provides licensing authority of post-secondary educational institutions in the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas shall be the Higher Education Commission, which shall be established by law. It has not yet been established by law, and that is the purpose of this bill, is to establish the uh, Higher Education Commission um, so that any post-secondary institutions that come to the Marianas um, would have a uh, governing body. Um, this does grandfather uh, NMC and I believe NMTI in it. Uh, we've had uh, some time to go over this bill. Um, it's quite extensive. I think the one thing that I personally would like to request um, from our um, fiscal analyst is what the cost of this enactment would be for um, our Marianas when, if and when it were to be passed by this legislature. Um, and so that, that would be one thing that I, I would like to, to request. Any other comments or requests from the members on this bill? Recognize uh, Rep. Manglonia. Oh, um, sorry. So has the analysis been done? Not at this time. I uh, made a request uh, recently, but it is only just new and it is not done yet. Okay, and uh, sorry if I missed this, but um, the draft that was sent, mm, these were decided on, or these were proposed, and uh, I can't recall attending a meeting where this was discussed. Uh, it has, it was, it has been on the agenda, but we have not yet discussed it. It's been tabled a couple of times. Uh, the draft that I sent you is something that I worked on with uh, the Senate Legal Council um, based on the comments that were received by the various entities that submitted comments thus far, such as NMC, Civil Service Commission, um, and the AG. All of those things have been shared. They were in the folder. Uh, there, the, 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 Things that they have asked for uh, to be updated within the bill, I, I worked with um, the Senate Legal Council on, and that is the most recent draft shared with you for your review. We have not adopted it. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I think this is something that we can start uh, working on. That way we can send it out for comments. Um, I see some of the amendments that were made, um, which I don't see any issues with. Um, so if the chair would like to uh, introduce the amendments and then we can uh, send it out for comments and then discuss this uh, in our next meeting after receiving comments from 
stakeholders. Thank you for the recommendation. So, um, short recess. And we're back, thank you. Um, so going back to old business, Senate Bill 22-08 SS1 to enact the higher C to the to enact the CNMI Higher Education Act of 2021 and for other purposes. Um, uh, just to reiterate, I would like to uh, get a fiscal analysis on this bill in particular because it does not have a funding source at this time. And I think that would be an important thing to note. Um, also, we want to give uh, the members and the legal counsel time to review the um, most recent draft that was kind of gone over with um, the comments that we received from the different entities. And we will come back to the next meeting to um, share the substitute of those changes, which we can then ask for more comments from the, the entities. Uh, so we will table this one. Can I, can I get a motion? So move. It's been motioned and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those against say nay. All right. This bill is tabled for the time being to get fiscal analysis and, uh, legal review. Moving on to the next part of our agenda, Senate bill 2205. SS1 HD1 to provide a behavioral health professional scholarship and for other purposes. 
last meeting, we made um, several amendments to this bill and I did send it out for comment. Um, I received a few comments, which I gave to you this morning. Um, they only made a few recommendations. Were you guys able to see that? So um, of the two comments that I received, um, the one other recommendation that was given was to consider changing the language in uh, page four, line 10, regarding the enrollment requirement. Uh, in here, it says, enroll in no less than nine credit hours in a graduate program per term or what the institution deems to be full-time status in an accredited behavioral health program at a college or university. These courses must not be repeated courses. The one comment that I received regarding that line was that um, nine credit hours might be higher than a full-time status, so we might... Uh, consider to change it to uh, six credits, which would equal two courses, which would be considered full-time according to these commentors. Um, the line that's in this sentence that says, or what the institution deems to be full-time status, I, I wonder legal counsel would, because of the or, if they had less than nine credit hours, would it still be considered full-time if the school calls it full-time? Yes, it would. Um, but then there's the question of uh, why you'd want to have a higher threshold um, in the absence of uh, internal policy of the institution uh, with a lower threshold. Yeah, I'm not really sure why it was that way. Any other thoughts from the members? Recognize um, Manglenia. Thank you, Chair. Uh, wouldn't most um, institutions consider a full-time student um, having no less than 12 credit hours? I, I'm not sure when it comes to a master's program in behavioral health. That's kind of like it depends on the school you're at, I think, too. I think that's why the or what the institution deems to be full time would be like covering. Uh, thank you. Are you? All right. Um, so is there a way we can change that language just to focus on the full-time status? Perhaps we can change it. Uh, give me a few seconds to think about that. So um, Cam, are you ready to possibly look at uh, line 10, enroll in, if we possibly delete from no less than all the way to or, so that it would say enroll in what the institution deems to be a full-time status, would that, would that meet minimum legal sufficiency for a full-time student? Legal? I think so. If the uh, if the institution deems X number of credit hours to be full time status, then that's full time status. Simplifies it, right? Okay. And one other comment from the submitted comments. Um,
I guess one thing that pops out to me, and I'm not sure if you guys also noticed, um, but I did not see a funding source specifically within the bill. And knowing that this, uh, this bill would eventually cost the Marianas up to half a million dollars by the end of its course, it, it would be prudent to decide what the funding source would be. I did ask the author about it. And uh, sorry, I'm looking for that message. He did say that we can go ahead and amend it to include a provision that the legislature must appropriate needed funds. Um, legal counsel, it, are we required to state where the funds must be uh, appropriated or is it sufficient enough to say that the legislature must appropriate there's there's no requirement to uh, sort of pre earmark um, a funding source. I mean, as a policy choice, if you wanted to, you could. But um, in terms of legal sufficiency, it would be fine to just uh, state that there's a, a requirement to appropriate. Where would that go um, logically in this bill? Would we have to put a new section? That would probably make sense. Okay. Short recess.
All right, we are back. Thank you for your patience. Um, we are, are now going to move back to our conversation, uh, making amendments, additional amendments in this bill. Um, I just talked about the first one uh, regarding the enrollment and full-time status, and now we're moving on to page five. Um, Representative Mangonia, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to, pro to propose an amendment or to make a motion to amend section 1623 on page five um, to strike uh, in the first sentence <clears throat> after the word funds um, and what comes after that. So then the, the new language would be scholarship awards will be funded from CNMI scholarship educational assistance funds. Uh, the scholarship administrator shall set aside sufficient funds to meet the needs of participants in the behavioral health professional scholarship program. So move. Can I get a second? All right, we've got uh, a move to amend this bill in two different areas and it's been seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those uh, against say nay. And the ayes have it. All right. Um, any other discussion? All right, thank you for the reminder. We're going to now move on to this other amendment. Um, I move to strike on page four, line 10. Uh, the language will now read or can read, enroll in what the institution deems to be full-time status in an accredited behavioral health program at a college or university. These courses must not be repeated courses. Um, the reason I offer this amendment is to um, ensure that the student is not locked into um, a credit hour that is not actually full time. We, we will allow uh, whatever the school that they are enrolled in that determines what the full time status would be. So moved. Can I get a second? All right, it's been moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor of this amendment say aye. All those opposed say nay. And the ayes have it. Second amendment has been approved. Uh, Madam Chair, at this time I would like to uh, move to adopt Senate Bill 22-05 SS1HD2. Can I get a second? It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. And this bill has been uh, adopted. S Senate Bill 2205 SS1 HD2. Um. Uh, short recess. Okay, and now we're back. Um, I would like to ask uh, our LA CAM to please create the committee report for this bill. And uh, we'll go from there. Moving on on our agenda uh, in announcements. Are there any announcements from the members? Uh, 
Uh, not announcements, but uh, any update on PSS? That I'm sure. Thank you for asking. I did uh, ask for them to come for today, but they were unable. Let me just check my message. Um, I am going to be scheduling another meeting in uh, May, and I anticipate that they will be present for the May meeting. Uh, there was a recent vote by the Board of Education to have Hopwood remain at their campus. And so we want to hear updates directly from them and also the plans moving forward on what, what's going to happen. Um, and so that is that is next on our agenda for sure. Thank you for asking. Um, yes, I know a lot of people watching have also been waiting for, for that. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Representative uh, Manguinia. Yeah, thank you. And just to add on, um to have PSS repair. I'm not sure if you got a response, but this is a uh, more of a concern in regards to premium pay PSS repair. I'm not sure if you got a response, but this is a uh, more of a concern in regards to premium pay that has been um, constantly um, being brought up with constituents. Um, after hearing that um, Secretary of Finance mentioned not receiving requests, but PSS saying they did submit a request. Um, and just to, to see uh, if they did in fact submit a request and if they got a formal response, and if not, can they submit a request? Um, you know, uh, I understand that the funds are running dry and that the time to obligate these funds is um, uh, f quickly approaching. But um, in addition, um, there have been, I have been uh, approached by um, several um, teaching staff that, um, you know, their salary hasn't been adjusted um, in the same way that the administrators and other central staff's salary has been reverted back to pre-COVID levels. Um, I don't know. Uh, where uh, the board's decision is in regards to reinstating the salary levels of these uh, teaching staff, oh, well, I, actually all staff, in regards to getting them back to pre-COVID levels. Uh, so that's something that the chair, I'm not sure, has the answers to or can prepare or um, allow PSS to prepare responses to those um, inquiries from the public. Thank you. Thank you, Rep Manglonia. Yes, um, we will definitely get updates about the premium pay issue. Um, and I will also ask them to give us updates about the pay scale and, and such. Um, you are correct, PSS uh, teachers and staff have not um, seen their salaries revert uh, since the um, uh, furloughs and other uh, austerity measures that happened at PSS, unlike other government entities that did go back to their previous levels. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, I will make sure that I reach out to the commissioner uh, to ask for those updates. Any other requests that we can ask PSS for our next meeting? Okay. Thank you, Rep. Mangonia. Any other announcements? Last call. Moving on to adjournment. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motioned and seconded. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed can stay. And this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.